Hello, lovely people. Good day and good vibes to you from magnificent Miami. We are here ahead of a huge Formula One race this weekend. And that guy right there, wow, that's legend seven-time world champ Lewis Hamilton. He'll be one of the fastest drivers on the planet. Zooming at a top speed of about 200 miles per hour. We hope you are often zooming today as well. It's Wednesday, May 3rd. Also, hashtag your word Wednesday. Follow me at CoyWire on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok, and put your unique vocabulary words in the comment section of my most recent posts. And we are going to choose one. Good one to, to work into mother's show. <coughs> Let's go. I'm CoyWire. This is CNN Tech. And we start in Spain today when, where they are seeing a major drought. The Spanish National Weather Service says the country has been in a long time drought since the end of last year. In March, the country only received 36% of its average monthly rainfall, which made it the second driest March this century. But it didn't stop there. The trend continued into the last month, and we may see it now end up being the driest on record. These conditions have been caused by soaring temperatures that make it feel like it's midsummer instead of springtime. The lack of water, while it's having a tra- catastrophic impact on farms across the region. According to a coordinator of farmers and ranchers organizations, the drought has affected about 60% of Spain's countryside and it's destroyed crops across more than 8 million acres. That's an area bigger than the entire state of Maryland. Also, Spaniard have been asked to conserve water by taking quick showers, being mindful in washing dishes, and not filling their swimming pools. Our senior international correspondent, Fred Plyton, has more in our very dry conditions in Spain. From afar, even nature disasters can look majestic. But close, the full impact of a global climate emergency is clear to see. This is a South reservoir near Barcelona. Normally, one are the largest bodies of fresh water in this part of Spain. But months of drought and the water levels are so low that the entire medieval village, easily underwater, has come to light. The folks say, here say normally you'll barely be able to see even the tip of medieval church because it will be almost fully submerged. But now, as you can see, the church is very much on land and that authorities here fear things will get much worse once the summer heat really sets in. The Zou Reservoir is, is already at less than 10% capacity, and that's causing hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland to dry up. All this week is probably lost. Farmer Santi called Cal- the villas. Show me why. <coughs> this grain should be milky, he said. We're in a critical moment. If it doesn't rain, this will end up empty. We should be seeing the rain come up to here. But it's only like this. If it doesn't rain in coming in the coming weeks, the crops will the crop will be zero. But there is no rain in sight in temperatures in Spain. It has skyrocketed. Scientists at the Institute of Agri Food Technology and Research and Technology are trying to find ways to make very little water go a long way. Chef scientist John, uh, uh, Juan Girona says efficiency to maximize. It's all our goals, taking the most of a drop of water. Just like the crops, the people in this area are also in survival mode. Dozens of towns are without water and need to get it drunk in. The village customs here haven't had any for a year, for about a year, and residents say they can't even rem- Remember the last time it rained? I don't recall one. Tell me. It's been a long time, a year or more, without proper rain. Nothing. Back at the Zao Reservoir, authorities are actually draining most of the remaining water to prevent this precious and even scattered resource from getting contaminated by such at the bottom of this once mighty lake. <coughs> Alright. Summer is just around the corner, and if you are, and your family are thinking about heading to any, any of South Florida or Caribbean beaches, you might need to know that you could encounter some seaweed, and, and by some I mean a whole lot of it. That's because of the record-breaking amount of seaweed known as sargassum, 
which can smell a lot of eggs or sulfur. When, when it washes up on shore, it's starting to pile up on popular beaches, threatening tourism in certain areas. Check out this NASA images, which shows how, just how enormous this massive blob of floating seaweed is. 13 tons of it just drifting ominously throughout the Caribbean, stretching all the way to the west coast of Africa. CNN's Leila Santiago reports on a beach in Key West, Florida, and tells us how this seaweed phenomenon is a, just the tip of the iceberg, with the peak expected to come later this summer. <clears throat> this is a sargassum mixing with a few other things, and this is what enunciating Florida's coast, specifically, they are expecting the east coast. And remember, remember last month, we talked about this, but now we're actually starting to see it come in. And those record numbers, the scientists predicted. So much so that take a lot, look over there. The beach trackers here at this beach at Key West have already a, a, a while and has already done one uh, run through and watch what's hitting the Florida growths right now. Let's go for a walk so I can kind of show you how all this stuff just piles up and again it's pretty smelly because it decays out there and as we mentioned this is what one scientist told me it's just the tip of the iceberg more expected because when this is out there it is not only right now a 5,000 mile long body of seaweed it's still growing whales out there so it is increasing in an amount that will be head this way 10 second trivia which country has the southernmost capital in the world Argentina, Australia, New Zealand, or, or South Africa. <laughs> when it comes to capital cities, Wellington in New Zealand is as low as you can go, sitting at 41, de 41 degrees south. Now, when you think of New Zealand, you might think of Kiwis, which is the country's iconic national board, where the population of these flightless birds has plummeted. Conservationists say that most people have never seen a kiwi in the wild and estimate that there are only about 70,000 of them left in the country. But as our Michael Holmes tells us there, there are now efforts to keep this species alive and thriving in New Zealand. <laughs> the flight to save the kiwi, the iconic flightless bird, is taking off in New Zealand. Ever since people came here, we had a special connection with an animal known as kiwi. Central Tamari Merth sports teams, our rugby league team, our defense force, you know, even when we go overseas, we are known as Kiwi. So we ask, so it's our duty really to look at the, the animal that gifted us this name. There is about 90 initiatives to save the Kiwis in New Zealand, many of them focusing on removing threats, which has reduced the population by educating dog owners and killing predator speedy species like stoats. Kiwis are surprisingly tough and resilient. They got these big fighting claws so now kiwi can fight a, a whole heap of pests from possums. And stoats are really the only issue for adult kiwi is roaming dogs. When they get ham hammered at stoats eating their cheeks before they get up to that fighting weight. A group of kiwis raised a breeding program was raised a release near Wellington last November. Exper experts say that could be this could be the first time wild kiwis live in the area in about a century, and so far they seem to be thriving. <coughs> we did the first health check a couple of months later, and we we're expecting that them to kind of you know hold weight or lose a little bit of weight. But a really pre pleasing re re result was that half of those birds has put on weight, including one bird, put on whopping 400 grams. So it's like this here, plenty of food on the ladder out of these hills. <laughs> That's hopefully room for to grow for New Zealand. That's your treasure and the natural effort to save it. Michael Holmes, CNN. All right, a final study takes that to, to America, Heartland, where Fur baby is getting today's 10 out of 10 for winning this year. Bark. Ranger Superintendent of Gateway 
Archbar in St. Louis meet the adorable Betty Fate, the twelve uh, year old Basset Hound, taken a t- crown adopted back in 2020 after being re- rescued from a tough breeding and hoarding situation. Betty had a new leash on life as a top notch dog at Gateway Arch Park. B A R K Bark Rangers program from the National Park Service and Bark stands for Bag Your Pets Weights. Always leash your pet. Respect wildlife and know where you can go. That's pretty dog on sweet. Congrats, Betty Fate. We're giving a special shout out to Delaware Valley High School in Midford, Pennsylvania today. We'll see your warriors. And one other special shout out to Alex at Renfo and Harper Tally watch CNN every day from Decatur, Georgia. Well, did that then leave? 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 It's our guest producer, uh, producer today. Rise up. See you tomorrow, everyone. You're more powerful than you know. I'm Hoy Water, and we are CNN.